Okay, that was a long uh, intro. I guess we'll get on with the, the show, as it were. This is eBearing. Um, just to remind everyone, if you want to follow along, and this is what I'm using as my notes, that's my write-up of it. It has all of the information of... We're going to part two, so I'm under cool plays, and not the ones in part one, but part two. Oh, no, it's no problem at all. Uh, as long as you ask nicely like you've been doing X Huck Nasty, we're happy to answer your questions, so it's no problem to, to stop. Because a lot of you're not the only one who's not used to some of this stuff, too. Most most of the people here are used to playing in tiles, and they don't they don't know about this because they don't have any reason to. But yeah, feel free to ask questions, and it's no problem. Um, all right, so that URL, I'm at part two. These are the first three uh, cool plays from eBearing. This is number one. I don't have a title for this. Uh, this is him doing formicid things in Lair. So let's start the playback. He's dug out these kill holes that you see right here, or, or just he's dug out these these pathways. He has his own custom glyph set that's uh, kind of quirky, and he uses you can't see his usual color scheme. Um, he uses a solarized color scheme that for his own playback. And okay, that little red curly brace is a sensed monster because formicids have antennae. They can only wear hats um, as a downside, but as an upside, they can sense nearby monsters. Nice sleep on that frog, e bearing. You don't want frogs waking, you know, being awake. He's sticking more kill holes. Oh, five hided hydra. Spooky. He's excluded it. That's smart. Yeah, DCSS is a very easy to pick up game, and it's not too hard to go from total newbie and dying all the time to to getting your first win if you play a you know really strong combo like minotaur berserker and there are others you can try if you want to be you know if you want something on the easy side but maybe a little bit more you know all, relatively straightforward but maybe not as simple yeah this is formicid enchanter beware the food cost he bearing spend Spen is still a fine combo to learn with. It's just much, much more complicated than Minotaur Berserker. Or, you know, some other easy combos that you could choose. Like, if you didn't want to do Trog, you might... Oh, fall through a shaft. E-Bearing, oh no. Ah, I remember. This is first play is Cool Play Ironic, also known as Uncool Play. And that's E-Bearing got shafted by his own exploration shaft traps. E-Bearing, how does it feel to be a victim of your own... Crawl changes. Yeah, the changes to traps in 0.23. Certainly a lot of uh, players have expressed some level of dislike for at least some parts of it. But um, I, I really like the way it works in, in relative to the old system. Uh, he he bearing made dispersal traps and uh, a new trap type, which they, they work. They're, you know, they, they're pretty interesting. They, they have maybe some issues, but... The last time we tried to introduce a new trap, it didn't quite go as well, and I think uh, dispersal traps have been relatively fun. And they sure they do have some issues, but they're neat. And um, and the way traps work now prevent prevents you from having to track your tiles as much, at least. Oh, glad you like. You mean Gauntlet, Darkwing? Thank you. That was the, my big. That's my favorite crawl contribution that I've ever made. That was also a big new 0 0.23 change. So yeah, I designed and implement gauntlets based on, you know, I had the idea a long, long time ago, and it also dovetailed with the transporters, that, which was another feature I made back in 0 0.20 and I've done a lot of work with. But yeah, vault. I had a lot of help with gauntlets from Minmei, who made a bunch of maps and also some really nice tiles and sub vaults, but... That was the probably the best thing that I've designed for crawl so far. He's exploring. All right, that was that was his cool play, uncool play. Okay, we're just watching E bearing play at this point. It's like let's just watch E bearing play. Twenty eight nine eight eight. So he got shafted by his own trap. That was an ironic cool play. Now we're gonna go to an actual unironic cool play.
And this one starts here at this frame. Oh yeah. Yep, so you got some 022 changes that maybe made it in, you know, after you stopped as well as all 023. 023 was a pretty good release. A lot of fun changes in that in this version. 024 has been quite slow. I have not been able to do crawl dev. eBearing has been doing some cool stuff, thankfully, as has Advil been working on pregen stuff. Um, like he has been doing for the last couple of releases. Do still do really cool work with that. Wall jump. I don't I actually don't remember what this cool play is. He's wall jumping it up. These yaks, they don't know what what's gonna happen. It's it's coming around here. Oh, I think I remember now. Um, so this yellow blocks are just layer walls that are obviously diggable. Oh, Death Yak. He dug into the Death Yaks and woke him up, but he's going to take him on. Uh-oh. Got some damage. There's more Yaks. Well, thankfully, it was just one Death Yak and two Yaks. Ah, yes it is. This is Katoble. Yeah, those glyphs aren't rendering of the statues. That's odd. I wonder why that is. I wonder what he has for his statue glyph. That's why I didn't recognize it. Yeah, those vertic those like horizontal line looking walls, those are stone. Oh, he got clouded. There's Katoble. He can get petrified. So he can't stay in those clouds. So he's using Wujian Whirlwind to pin the Katoble because he doesn't want Well, I I'm not sure I I mean, the pin stops it from moving, sort of. I'm not sure why. He's not using Serpent Slash. Well, he killed the Katoble. There's more than one Katoble in this vault. That's why the mixture of Yaks and Death Yaks, because this one just places sort of a smattering of different ones, as well as, I guess, Manticores. Those weird little round-looking things are plants, by the way. I don't know what glyph that is. I think the actual cool play is coming up with another Katoble. I tried to be reasonable about not showing too many minutes, but some of these are on the order of like, you know, six or seven minutes. Yak looks drowsy. He lunge stabbed him. Not really sure why he felt the need to lunge stab that yak when a normal stab would have been just fine. And he, I guess, yeah, he did pin it, but the problem is it could have awoken. So I don't know why he was, why he was spending a turn if he used DH, because they can wake up. I mean, it would be pinned, but you don't want it to wake up, presumably because you, you in, you put it to sleep. Oh, he got clouded. There's the Katoble. Yeah, this one has a long path, a single tile passage, so you can get into trouble. Those clouds will petrify you if you spend more than a turn in them. This one doesn't know. Okay, it's wandering yet. Yeah. Oh, he's okay. Yeah. So he got himself in a corner, but of course he's got his path out. Now I think we're going to see some whirlwind, or not this time. No, we're just going to melee it this time. Now he's starting with... Is this the cool play? I didn't really fully watch this, I just got, you know, where it started. I think it's, I think the cool play is just like, you know, him carefully fighting these Where does he actually say cool play? Yeah, that must have been it. Okay, yeah, I probably passed through it. Let's uh, let's find that again. Because uh, I probably just made a mistake there. Sometimes if you're if I'm if I'm talking, it might. Okay, that's that's not that's one of the problems by searching by a string. Um,
Yeah, this song rules. This game is not a very good game, though, I will say. Even for allowing this style of game. But I, I love this uh, opening theme. It almost sounds like a Christmas song due to the bell jingling. It's just really cool, though. And there's not a ton of great music in this game either. Oh, I see. This is the cool play. This was the... I think I went to the wrong frame, maybe? Yeah, PS3. Now, the speedrun of PS3 is kind of neat. There's a speedrunner called Jai Seed who has a lot of uh, Fantasy Star. Um, that was the cool play. I think my frame might have been off there. So we watched him in lair. That was supposed... That was the... That cool play. I hope I don't have other ones that are off. Which frame is this? Okay. Alright, so now we're going to go to what I hope is the right frame. Yeah, I know this one too. Alright, this should be right. Honestly, I think I just got to the wrong frame and we were just... Sometimes Jetty Play does get a little bit corrupted. Um, I don't know why. I don't know if that would happen. It, okay, this is that Hydra that got excluded earlier. Uh, the D5 or the five-headed Hydra, and now he's looking at his his list. But yeah, there's some really cool Fantasy Star speedruns. Jai Seed is uh, somebody who does that on Twitch. You can find him on Twitch. And uh, he's done Fantasy Star 3 speedruns. Um, he probably has the record. He's done a ton of PS4 speedrun. That's a really cool speedrun. Uh, it's super easy to die at any point in that run. It's it's pretty intense. Keep bearing looking through his spell list again. Very carefully looking through his spell list. Choose a spell, E bearing. Choose it. I don't remember this really long, like... Okay, here we go. I skip forward a bit. I should have... I probably should have cut that out, honestly. He's going through. He's going to lunge. The risky play. Can he get a lunge stab through the wall? Yes, he does. Stabbed it like a pig. Retract your mandibles. That should be the cool play. Yep. Yeah, my uh, I'm a dev since about 2013. Uh, I've been um, pretty active. I mean, I was making commits back in uh, 0 014 or so, but especially active from say 0 020 through 0 023, and will be active for 0 024. I just haven't really made any commits because of all the work craziness, but... All right, that was E. Baring's first two cool plays. We'll try to do this a little bit more efficiently because I'm kind of going slow and also kind of loading the wrong stuff, but I do have nice notes that um, has everything all set up, so it should go... Uh, it should go better. Okay, this one is frame 7599. That is not what I want. 7599. Here we go. This is E bearing the blocker, former city of Wuxian, in Orc 1 currently, but that's not where he's going to end up. And how many plays do we have here? We have one. We have one here. Oh, I remember this one. Okay, yeah. Um, he is going to go to... Sh uh, was it Spider? Oh, Spider 1. What an entrance. Look who it is, Mr. Sparkboy. FFS. <laughs> but, does does he bearing have a play up his sleeve to deal with this potential one? He's lucky he didn't get... Uh, well, Chain Lightning would have hit a bunch of stuff, but... Nicola didn't wake up. Four unID'd scrolls, he bearing, please. This late? Come on now. ID your scrolls, he bearing. Or remove the identification game, he bearing, like you said you wanted to. Ability. Your muscles tense. Lash two. Uh, okay, yep, he got the instant. Cool play. 
Um, he did that because that means that Nicola will never wake up because um, Serpent Slash is instant. It's an ability that Wujian has that gives you two free two free actions and also during those actions increases the damage from your martial moves, the, uh, the passive attacks that Wujian grants you. So you can get two free movement and hence you can kind of like always create a gap it's a it does cost piety but the piety cost isn't too bad and you can use it a lot it's one of the reasons why this god it played well is is significant is a very strong god definitely stronger than some of the typical choices like oka um uh because you've got this really superlative kind of like escape tool along with um a f ability to make instant fog that's uh very effective and basically 100% reliable. I think we're gonna see him... Don't diss your bro, Oka. I don't know, Perpetual Blur. I might have to diss him. Oka's long been on the list of uh, gods we'd like to sort of change the way it works. To answer your qu earlier question, X, X Huck Nasty, um, yeah, food is definitely on its way out. It got simplified by longtime dev Amethyst, aka Neil. Um, and um, back in 022 or 021 at this point. I forget, but it's unimportant. It's much simpler food system now um, with only one basic food type. Um, it's on its way out, but not completely removed because we want the, the current forward progress clock that we have in food basically does not work but it does exist there and and act as some kind of limitation also there there are things that have food costs still in the game that probably won't have food costs in the future when we finally get a forward progress clock that we like it might be just a conventional food system but it's actually going to exist and by that we mean so that you don't just sit on stairs on every level and rest and shout and currently what mummies and once foodless vampires are merged uh, vampires can kind of do on every level with complete safety we don't want really degenerate boring gameplay like that to be the default maybe P yeah that what Schwerd Moda said is, is kind of what it is maybe we can trick them into thinking there is a forward progress clock I mean you can run into it mostly if you screw up you sort of feel it a little bit if you're spriggin kind of sort of but not really. Mostly you run into it uh, by casting a lot of spells without maybe having quite enough spell casting. It can kind of there to trip you up, but it's not. Oh, here it comes. Look at that wall stab. Oh. Oh, he got him, but he didn't kill him. I see. But now he's going to kill him. Oh, he bearing. He bearing. He's not dead, and you got low HP. Oh no, the lash with the lunge, yes, that was the play. Use that Wujian instant turn action. You get a bonus from Serpent Slash. So he used one of his turns to back off and another one to come back for the lunge to get extra damage. He saved it. That wasn't part of the cool play. It was just the Serpent Slash out of Los of Nicola, but we had to watch Ebering almost, almost die, but recover nicely. Because... We've, we've got to see his mistakes and criticize every aspect of them. It's important. Alright, this is... Uh, I should hopefully go a little bit faster. I'll be talking... I'll have less like to summarize and I'll go faster as we go, but... Because I'll... Basically, I'll, I'll mentally get, you know, better at swapping this in and out. This is plays 5 and 6. This is... These are late game plays. We're going to start in Slime 5, 19641. Here we are, Slime Pits 5. As you can see, I'm just going to double check. Yep. Uh, pretty likely, lightly. Very likely, I think. Um, I don't know exactly what form it will be in. I think there are things to be worked out, but I... I'd be pretty surprised if they didn't hit this release, honestly, given how far along they are. 
So here he is, Slime 5, with his plus 8 Rapier of Elect. You know, uh, if you don't have, like, a Quick Blade that's enchanted, a Rapier of Elect is not the worst melee weapon. Stab-wise, it's not as good as a Dagger, so you do want to have a Dagger for Stabs. Uh, looks like he's really playing this as a stealthy type, going for stealth and stabbiness. Um, which is, it's pretty fun. I have to say that you want to kind of do, like, I did this, I did a V-Pen, a Vampire Enchanter of Wu, and you really want to play up the melee angle. Um, uh, he actually has pretty good AC. I don't actually know what his armor is. 29 is actually pretty high. Um, of course he's got the SH going. Um, he does, he's not even using a two-handed weapon, so that... I wouldn't do this with Formicid, but then again, this is CSDC and you are playing this combo. I would probably just transition this one into a mostly melee character that had some nice hexes at his disposable, dis disposable, disposal. Um, he's honestly pretty low EV for, uh, I mean, he does have the SH, but he's got really low dex, that's why. I tend to go, he must have on something somewhat heavy, I tend to go more dex for, than... Then just pumping it. There's the royal jelly next to his hot trap. That's no good. We want to get it into some place where it's safe to fight. So he's probably going to lure it back into a, a corridor. Its royal jelly, of course, is is fast. So you can't um, you can't really just like spend a whole ton of turns messing around. And he's kind of right out in the open, and it's going to be closing distance. And he doesn't have haste. And now he's he's got it next to him. What's he going to do? It's, it's attack. Oh, nice blocking two attacks. Oh, he's, he's blocking two attacks again. He's into the corridor, though. He's... All right, now he's gotten corroded. All right. He's done a martial move, I think. Corroded minus eight, though. This isn't amazing. What are we going to do, E-Bearing? What's the play? Agility, might. Oh, he's webbed him. Or, uh, net tra Oh, didn't really fill in with summons. Um, just might and agility. Not corroded. He's just going for those stabs, and yep, he does stab it down. This wasn't the smoothest kill by far, and he did roll some dice here. He's now very fully corroded. Um, I wouldn't call that kill a cool play, but I think the cool play part is what's coming up. Wall jump, look at this tech. He's going to jump over these Azure Jellies. He got mostly Azures. That's decent luck in terms of not getting Acid. But you have to watch out with the RC. I don't know what his RC is. Nice jump. Now what? These Jellies are also fast. You can they'll, they'll catch up with them. Ooh. He's down to like close to half HP. What are we doing? We're still Corroded minus 8. He's, he's just tabbing this out. He doesn't have Storm up. He's just going for conventional melee. Yep, apparently not Silver Javelins. He's just tabbing it out. Can't say this is the play I would be making. I would be, I would definitely be doing a lot of Serpent Slash here. For sure. Just spamming that Serpent Slash. And Heavenly Storm. And I would have filled it in with summons, but... Notice they are all dead. He is at 50% HP. He is alive, relying on those defenses. This is the uh, melee enchanter, you know, who actually is using stealth life. I, at least I assume he has good stealth. Picking up that chainmail, which is not the best chainmail, if we're going to be honest. I think he's going to annotate cool play pretty soon. Yeah, I think the slime escape was the silver jabs. Yeah, to the to uh, the royal jelly. What's up, bearing Are you? Is this it? Yeah, slime like minus five. It's not. It's not very good. I didn't see him annotate it yet. He's just dwelling on it. But I'm pretty sure. Yep, there it is. Royal jelly fight escape with. Woo. Yep. Uh, he probably did use a Serpent Slash to uh, to get a gap going, and those jellies are fast. But, you know, he survived. Next up, five, frame 54598. Five, this is his last cool play. 
think this is in Zot. Oops. Five four five nine two. No, this is in depths with a frost giant. Look who it is. It's Menos, scary angel bro. But he's asleep once again. Oh, E. Bearing with the lunge stab using just his rapier. Tim, I don't know. That was a controversial play. He didn't even use a dagger, but... Tim, I, I, I think this might be roguelike AAA player of the year award material. What do you think? That's when Tim says exactly, Gamma Funk. This is why E. Bearing is really the dark horse of this competition. He's really moved up. Nobody thought he could overtake Gamma Funk for AAA roguelike designer dev player of the year, but he's really he's really showing that he's gonna make a strong contention for the crown. I'm gonna have to really watch out. Tim is my co-commentator in this AAA roguelike designer of the year tournament, Flood Killer. Come on, keep up. Okay. Keep up with the lore. There's clearly a lot of lore at work here. Uh oh, Nightbot, sign me out. Apparently it decided I was no I was a security threat and remove me from the premises. Beware the lore cost. Yeah, if I have to ad lib too much, I, I start coming up with really weird stuff and then Nightbot logs me out and then just nothing works. Well, thank you for the cool plays, uh, Ebering. That was a very cool Menas stab. I have to say, I would really strongly recommend you consider getting a dagger. I think even only moderately enchanted, it would outclass the rapier. It's cool how the, you moved over to the demon blade and did the, presumably, um, let me paste the morgue and I kind of want to see this. Presumably did the melee stealth build which not the most natural choice but it is a thing you can do oh no he didn't have stealth he had pearl dragon scales plus two interesting that's uh probably not the best armor you could have had i would i would i would think i mean i don't know where those ac scrolls maybe he just didn't find a lot i mean it is good armor but probably could have had a plus 10 plate I mean, there is more EV. So I guess this is not stealth. He's just, he's, he had enough for stabs and that's it. So that sort of does explain, of course, you know, the use of the rapier. But if you are going for a stab, you really want to have a dagger. Depends on what your scrolls are looking like. Nice uh, plus two large shield of, of gestures, by the way. It's an interesting kind of uh, approach to the phone. All right, next up we have Peter Cordia. Uh, cool play. He's got three cool plays, and this first one is on D6. To pick up the pace a little bit on this, because we don't. This stream will go on too long. 15, 272. Got a lot of, uh, a lot of things to go through. Oh, did you not load this? Ah, I can't see. It's the name. Oh, this doesn't appear. Oh, no. This does not appear to be the right TTY rec. So I, according to this frame count, uh, I can't see the URL. Let's try this again. Because this frame is... Yeah, this frame is its too many. Uh-oh, uh-oh. What did we do here? We have a bad frame listing. Or a bad TTY rec. On D6. Yep, this is the wrong TTY rec. Okay, that's easily fixed. I probably uh, updated probably updated it and um, uh, 
Yeah. I mean, you can just abandon your stealth, but I hate that sort of approach. Let's see what this is. This is the right one. 24... Tw yep, this is a different... Alright, this is probably the correct one. I'll have to go and update the dock. It happens when you assemble a lot of these. You have to go through the different TTOI wrecks to find the right one, and it can be... Who is it? Was Peter Cordia the one who really... Yeah, I think Peter Cordia had really um, problematic, let's say... Um, I believe it was him. Yes. he. The way he did it, he basically made it as hard as possible for me to get his seat because he has this really nasty situation. We'll come to it later, but he started and stopped like 10 times. Each time creates a new... Uh, 15, 2, 7, 2. Wait, really? Interesting. Okay. Uh, he starts and stops his T2Y Rex a lot. I guess I got one in between. Yeah, you can get the URLs, but we have a problem. Peter, he got me again. Um, I'm going to have to look through the entire list. And find the one that's in between. Now that's weird. Oh, no, that's why. Not not the log command, the LG command. Let's try that again. Nope, you can query this. This shows you all TTY Rex. You can get it by milestone and you might get a spe special file, but as I recall, this one didn't have. Okay, so 524 1305. And then we saw 524.01.45. Which one do we have loaded now? Uh, I don't want to adjust this because that would be bad. What was... Oh, it's up here still. Sorry, this will take a sec. 524.12.43 is what I loaded recently. And then we have 524.12.43. Okay, and then there's also 2401.45. Let's try this one. Fortunately, yeah, this is what it was like to get Peter Cordia's TTY Rex. He had, he um, started and stopped a lot more than most people do. Like, a lot more. Mostly, it was actually just this one incident in, that's one of his cool plays. Okay, we're gonna try I'll just paste it in chat not that anyone is gonna load it but there you go in case you were okay this one is probably the one because it actually has 16,000 frames 15272 jeez it, he was one of his uh, one of his uh, TTYRX one of the reasons why I couldn't stream last night although given I even ignoring him I had other others but it's an over. He had he didn't do it maliciously, and he just he had no way of knowing this. And it's people don't think about it, but every time you start a new session, like if you save and quit, that's going to mean a new TTY rec, which is fine from a player perspective, even if you are playing on console. But sometimes, if you want to go through them, it can be a little bit difficult to find them. Uh, now he's got yeah, I remember this cool play. Got an orc warrior and. And he can't kill this, or he's afraid to kill it. Oh, yep, it's damaged him pretty good. Well, this damaged him a bit. Hey, look, uh, it's Metal Gear music playing at the perfect time. He's alerted the Orc Warrior. Come on, Solid Snake, how are you going to get out of this? There's also an Ogre who's almost dead, but how do we do it? Snake? 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 To Kima's dance. Oh, look at the giant spike club. How's that going to come into play? Confuse. Oh, he's confused the orc warrior. Confused monsters will hit other monsters. He's backing away. Doesn't. Oh, orc warrior hits the ogre and he's dead. Look at that. Confuse action.
This is where he says cool play. So this is actually pretty straightforward use of Confuse. I, I feel Peter might be underutilizing Confuse a little bit um, because he thinks that this is sort of especially... Basically, you want to... Anything nasty, if you have Confuse castable, just use it. Um, it's definitely cool that the Orc Warrior killed the Ogre for you, though. I, I fully agree there. It's always neat when a Confuse monster... Uh, manages to stumble around and, and kill something else. You can do this a lot with like yak packs and stuff or any any group of monsters where it's like you don't really want to kill them. But, yep, nice job killing that orc warrior. All right, hopefully this next one will not have... That was just for this one, and then we've got two more that actually has... It's across three t three different TTY Rex because of what it is. Um, and he, there's actually like... That whole listing you see is mostly all from this one incident. It is a pretty crazy and cool incident, and so let's uh, check it out. This one's much more comical than than that one. Right, apparently, they all three start at frame zero. Uh, he's fighting a yak. I don't get the lead up to this, but he's gotten himself in trouble fighting death yaks. Apparently, he's engulfing them in poison gas. He's got Che. Now he shafts himself and oh, where does he end up? Oh no, special room with jellies. That's very bad. He's got a death ooze in there. That's that magenta one. And an acid blob. That's the cyan one at the top. He's got two other death oozes. So this is like horrifying. The, a lot of these others are just jellies and, and normal oozes. They're not scary. The, the, the orangish ones. Um, but the death oozes and acid blobs are are extra scary. Uh, this is week four summary. Um, yeah, worship Jiva. Time to leave Che. He's got three HP, so he's shafted down into this nightmare vault. All these um, high level slimes are they're not adjacent to him, but there's one only you know three tiles away. Uh, all of them except for two. Two of the death oozes those purple ones you see sort of in the middle that don't have the blue highlight those are awake they already know that he's here yeah this is a replay of an ongoing tournament where everybody is playing bow and it's not a it's not a meta thing huck nasty jay seems unhappy jay i thought we were friends what's up biggie welcome to the replay Nice emote, Egypt with with her wand, as she likes to say, "Dungeon mine, all mine." That's what she says when she finds a wand like that. Char dump. So he may he has like 15 TTY Rex of him loading this screen, looking at it for times ranging from like five seconds to like several minutes, and just looking at his inventory and then saving. And then some point later, loading it again, sometimes like a couple hours later, looking at it, saving. And he does this like five different times. Yep, you just gotta dig. And, um, okay, that's, I probably can stop this at this point and load the next TTY wreck. Anyhow, that, that was an awful lot of him looking at uh, at that big old box of jellies. That's That vault is called a special room. It's a, a kind of vault that places nasty monsters in a big box, like a lot of them, ranging from the most horrifying one is that version of it that gives you those like monsters that you shouldn't normally even be seeing until you go to slime because they're so high level. Acid blobs in particular, but death oozes or azure jellies are absolutely really way best anything that you normally see in lair but the other versions appear in like dungeon they will have like a bunch of orcs or gnolls an earlier dungeon um in elf you can get all mythical beasts and you can get them even in depths with like nasty mages and such uh they sometimes place a little bit of extra loot but they're just a big old box full of nasty uh nasty monsters this one starts at frame zero we're back at um I think we made one move, which was I forget what, but he's got he's gone from thir three HP to ten HP. Maybe it was quaff curing, I don't know. But you can see most jellies are not awake. Some of them are though. The two death oozes, the acid blob is not. The other death ooze that was three tiles away is now two tiles away. 
Yeah, right, because he was poisoned. Uh, he's near starving. That's always helpful when you're when you're at 13 HP, of course. Uh, he's inspecting the wall. Um, I don't know when he's... So it's skipping ahead. That was nine minutes. He sat here and looked at this for four minutes, and the playback skipped it. This TTY wreck right here is an hour and 37 minutes long, and I'm not... I don't think he... Yep, it now skipped ahead 30 minutes, or 25 minutes. He's finally dug out one tile, and he dug out of the vault. You can see it's a big square vault, and he magically dug out. There were no other monsters, so he lucked out. Well, no other monsters, you know, outside of the vault. He does indeed have the proper god for taking it. So now every single jelly... Oh, there's also a great orb of eyes. I didn't even talk about that. That can't do anything from... It needs a line of, you know, sight. But now he has confused the jelly. Um, I don't think it can swap with the high-level jellies anymore, so that's a nice play. What's he going to do to get out of this? Because he's worshipping Che, and he cannot move quickly. He still has MP, doesn't he? I don't know what his fail rate for. He has 7. He can't even use Step from Time. He only has 7 HP or MP left. He's XVing these monsters. Yeah, EH might not have had a good chance. I don't know if he tried to cast it already, but he probably did not because he was in that bad position. The problem with Confuse is that it might hit one of the other well I don't think they'll they'll hit it back though I don't think they'll hit it at all so it's probably the best one since it's the highest chance and they I don't think they will swap with it so it actually might be better than EH it might they might get to I don't actually know if monsters will hit a confuse a non-confused monster will hit a confused one and kill it it could hit, kill itself though it can hit itself and kill itself so in that sense that would be bad. He's still staring at this. This It started its ear. This is 41 minutes that he's been staring at this. Hopefully we're going to see... I kind of need to seek because he's going to be doing this forever. I'm going to seek forward a bit. He's looking at his wand list. Okay, here we go. Let's back it up a bit. Okay, finally he's going to do something. Yeah, 6 AC, 12 EV. This is 54 minutes in. Looking at his scrolls, really read the scroll of immolation. Oh, they're all on fire. Now you know what's going to happen next. Scatter shot. Everything explodes. Look at those explosions, folks. You don't see stuff like that every day, do you? Yes, you do, because you see it every time you use immolation in a big old box of monsters. He just killed a whole lot of high-level jellies and got a ton of experience. And got a bunch of level ups because he killed two death oozes, three death oozes, great orb of eyes. Did he kill the acid blob? Oh no. He got acid did. And the acid blob is not dead. And it's undamaged because it was out of Los. That green on the right, you can say where it says J acid blob and it shows green. That that is the HP indicator. That's how that's how we see that in console in the monster list he doesn't have the map display because you know you can't see that in console so that that green is its HP indication so it's at near full HP or lightly wounded as it shows there and that's not a monster that you want to be dealing with at XL12 with 3 HP worshipping Chaberdos he's excluding it yeah that's he's probably just seeing what its loss is so I don't know what else he does here. I'm going to skip this forward. Yeah, he char dumps a lot and just messes around for another basically 45 minutes but doesn't do anything. Now the final TTY wreck of this of this endless set of TTY wrecks. And once again we begin at frame 0. This is a 2 minute 54 second TTY wreck, but this contains the exciting conclusion of this cool play. Yeah, a lot of noise, but I mean, he he had to kill those things if they if they survive. He just doesn't have a lot of options. Here comes the crocodile. Yeah, Che, che is terrible, 
And this is, I think, the cool play because he just walked around the corner and that Acid Blob really was staring at him pretty... Assuming Acid Blobs have eyes, which... All right, it was... Its, its ooze was looking at him directly. And then he walked around the corner. There was fire clouds and it didn't want to walk into the fire clouds. And... Yep, here comes the cool play. Where did it go? He made it disappear. Some kind of magic trick. Basically, it, it stealth um, procked and it, it wandered. And it wandered out of the box there to the north. Yeah, you were playing Deacon for Dejiva. Yeah, you convert to Jiva so that those slimes can become um, neutral. And um, if you can sacrifice a bunch of... Now they become neutral right away upon conversion. Then you, you just have to deal with... Uh, he passed the stealth check. I said, yeah, stealth. yeah, that's true, Iggy. If you're going to fight a box full of high-level acid blobs and want to roll the dice for one of them forgetting about you, you could do that. But hey, cool play, Peter Cordia. That was indeed a pretty awesome situation that you that you did survive. This game does go on to end, uh, I think, very shortly thereafter, but I don't think related to these slimes. Yeah, I don't exactly... I don't know the mechanics of that, but... Turned out, conversion to Jiva did not happen. Next up, we have a rather well-known player who goes by the name Yermak. He's got two cool plays for us. As I was saying earlier, so this one is a bit of a problem for, as far as TTYRX go, because Yermak won this game, um, and like I was explaining how many different TTYRX will get made every time you save, you know, to continue later, and start up a new one that ends the current TTY rec. The TTY rec begins when your session begins, even actually on the character selection screen. That's all recorded too. All of that stuff, basically when the binary launches and start making starts making output, that's the beginning of the TTY rec. And it ends whenever you save and the game and the, the program exits. So of course you'll save and load over the course of multiple times. Well, this game from your Mac um, took Twelve hours and five minutes, and this TTY rec is a single twelve-hour TTY rec. Yes, him being your Mac, he played this in one long twelve-hour session. So that's going to be hell on my memory to load this. I need a program to split these TTY recs into smaller files. Um, but it's a huge TTY rec. <laughs> Peep show. I've tried to split these just using, you know, like, you know, a simple utility like the Unix split utility that just cuts up files, but that doesn't work depending on how it cuts it. The TTY WAC won't be playable. So, all right, let's see if we can seek for this first one and it's still loading okay yeah we can uh, well we can go to the frame of it hopefully it can start playback and uh, I'm gonna have to restart jetty play after this I think all right this is frame 2837 here we go he's he's got a bunch of monsters excluded He's only on D2. Doesn't want to lose this. This is uh, our current leader, point leader in the competition and highly likely to win, but he does have some stiff competition from Ultraviolet 4. So if he, he has all the bonus points, so he's playing this game to win it. Toe for Slime 5, Jiva, wow. It's risky. Adder is asleep, but now awake. So now he's got an angry Adder and only 19 HP. What does he do? He 
does have seven javelins. Oh, dispersal trap. Blink it away. Now what? What's the next move? Try on some gear, apparently. Going to use this opportunity to read ID some scrolls as well. He's just casually doing this in front of the adder. Why? Because then he's going to step onto that trap again and blink it this time out of Los. He's going to step forward. Here comes the adder. This adder is getting seriously pissed off. I don't think this adder likes being played with, but you know what? Your Mac doesn't care. He's just going to ID a potion now. And he swung to get the adder to possibly move. He doesn't want to take a hit. Now he's going to try dispersing it again. What's the... He's just going to keep toying with the thing to wear off that E8. Because the, the adder went to sleep and now has an anti-sleep timer. He can't be slept again for uh, some number of turns. Oh, but he just got him and now he stabbed him. Look at that mastery of the dispersal trap. Wearing out the clock, the anti-sleep you know, duration of the adder, using it to casually identify his gear like the adder doesn't even exist. Just no respect for that adder. Doesn't care what the adder thinks. Not interested in the opinions of adders. Well done. Your Mac. Next frame all the way forward to frame 120,332. We are in vaults one. With a very wounded, ugly thing skeleton. That's what that Z is. And it's, you notice the green highlight. That's because it's an ally. Greens have a green, allies have a green highlight. He is doing some LRD action. Very nice. Tentacle, ooh, a T-Mons has showed up. XL18, that's pretty scary. We got a nasty little vault here. He's taking some damage from these ranged attackers. He's going to throw up the blocker with his meager, ugly thing skeleton. And try some more LRD. But now his skeleton is all gone and he's got... You know, like three quarters of his HP. Time to eat. What's he going to do next? Is he going to try to LRD some more? He can't get slowed by the Wraith, and the Wraith can't do much damage. Oh, he's going to self-shaft. Bold. Oh, there's a Vault Sentinel. Oh, no, he got marked. Oh, hi, Mark. Now he's marked. He's got only three quarters of his HP. He's still got plenty of MP left. He opens the door and he backs behind it. He's going to have a hole. And now there's the Convoker. Going to call in some extra monsters. Now, of course, the mark and the sound that attend it, attends it, things only things awake will be able to follow the mark. Anything, Any monster that is awake, and uh, now, as long as he has mark, any monster that is awake knows his exact position and will seek directly to him. Um, if it didn't get woken up by the noise or if it wasn't already awake because about an eighth of all level monsters generate awake Change since we removed spawns in 022. He is just LRDing everything LRD is going to town. This is why LRD is such an amazing spell Level 5 spell one school can just destroy this entire Legion of vaults five troops. No problem as your Mac well knows People like to underestimate this spell and, and think that because monsters have some AC that it doesn't do good damage. But he's got 16 earth. Only, you know, 25 in is not an incredible amount, but it's certainly enough. And he's got enough spell power to just destroy this stuff. He probably did. He paralyzed it. That's what you see in the monster list flood killer. It says ugly thing paralyzed. That's uh, check out the monster list if you want to know which glyph is. That's that thing below the status bar. This is what console players look at a lot. We we don't have a mini map, so but we and and obviously some of the overlay information is lost, like the HP bar. But that Walt Warden has a green bar. That's its HP indicator. Well, that one said white ugly thing. You know it's white, right? The color tells you what color the ugly thing is. Like there's two red ones there. Sometimes it'll group them, but I was I just you asked me that question, I looked right at the minimap. I didn't 
you know. And yes, a blue highlight does indicate some kind of status. Certain other statuses like neutral, um, that's actually a, a whole a, an alignment. The color does tell you what the brown is, the acid version, of course. Yeah, and if there's a bunch of them, it'll just group them together. But check out the, the monster list there. I'm going to let this play till where he annotates, but you can see he is still just casting LRD. And now he's using uh, Wand of Clouds. I, he might have been using some Sandblast in there. I didn't. I wasn't following. And yep, that white ugly thing is still paralyzed. Now the white ugly thing is finally dead, but so is everything. Yeah, I will group them, but just you know, I I'm just pointing it out that that information was displayed there and that's literally what I looked at and it was definitely a solo one at some point I'm just saying I'm reminding people who aren't used to looking at this check out the monster list and usually the answer to your question is is going to be there now he's making a billion skeletons yeah you can see the monster list shows the bold ones it's basically grouping them all together because they're the same genus but if it can list them individually, it will. It only starts to group them when the monsters get, uh, when the monster count gets too high. Yeah, you can see how it's separately listed all these skeletons to the extent that it can. And uh, if there's too many now, you can see it's collapsed it back down to just saying 12 skeletons. So it kind of dynamically updates. Undead make you sleepy. Z. Yep, he had a lot of skeletons from that. Okay, next up is Blorks. He's got one cool play. He had another one which was like, um, I think he labeled it as an uncool play. I was going to include it, but we got so many, and I'm kind of glad I did because this has already gone fairly slow since due to various hijinks. All right, I'm going to actually stop and restart Jetty Play. On Jetty Play. And now I have to resize, unfortunately. Okay. Make it a bit smaller. We shouldn't need to restart it too much more. go jetty play is reloaded it's Mega Man remix I'm not sure I love this but you know what I'm not gonna I won't question it for now frame 16 391 here's Blorks for Miss of Wujian Oh, I need to make sure I have the inactivity skip. Triple Sword of Freeze. Nice sword, Lorks. There's a wandering. That brown highlight indicates that a monster's wandering. There's different highlights for, like, Paralysis, EH. Um, uh, he just got mutated, I think. What was that Flash? Yeah, a lot of these... Re like, this is... Like, I... This is something I'll probably remove from the playlist. I mean, it's all right. It's it's actually, you know, as far as these metal remakes goes, this one's actually definitely better than many. But they're not they're not amazing. It's actually not too bad to listen to. It's just sort of background music. OC remakes though is like very disappointing like a lot of the time. I just do it because it's sort of something for people to talk about. Nice Sokolo summoning. I forget what this cool play even is. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it's not bad. 
I wouldn't necessarily go out of my way to listen to it, but for background... Oh, we got the Heavenly Storm. There's too much heat. Those are all cloud glyphs, the ones that are shifting from yellow to white. The stars and the little section symbols. He's got five orb guardians. He's marked, that's why. This is why the cool play. He got marked by, I think, a trap. He's got a killer clown pinned. He's got all the orb guardians and the orb of fire. It's 14 slang from Storm. I don't blame anyone for not liking uh, OC Revix, though. I've definitely been removing more and more of it from the background playlist and just keeping ones that are kind of cool. I'll probably keep this one, but if it annoys me at some point, I'll remove it. I want to have more original game music, mostly. But it's nice to have background music, you know, sometimes it gives other people something to talk about. And every now and again, somebody will hear something and be like, even for an OC Remix, and be like, oh wow, I actually really like this. Oh man, we're at two thirds H or three quarters HP. Our rapier of speed, we've got 14 from Heavenly Storm. And we still haven't killed. There's five orbs of fire. I should have commented on that earlier. Holy crap. That is a lot of orbs of fire, dude. And a killer clown. You're not condoning anyone for liking this. I can't tell if you're trying to be like make an insult or if you're misusing the word condone. Or if you're trying to say you really dislike this. Because condoning means you're ex allowing them and you're saying you're not allowing them to like it. Yeah, <laughs> it's not condoning. You're not um, criticizing is what you meant to say. If you're not condoning, that means you don't like that they like it. But yeah, we get we get what you mean. Look at that. All handled, all with Wu Jian. This is where Maibi would say Wu Jian is insane. Rest in peace, Maibi. He was our previous cool play annotator for the last tournament, and I think he's taken a long siesta from Crawl because he's, you know, he, he kind of comes and goes with this game. He, he'll probably come back to it at some point. Um, he just got kind of tired with uh, all the work from the last replays and just wanted another Crawl, uh, crawl break. So hopefully, Maibi, if you're out there and uh, you'll come back when you're rested and ready to tr ready to play some crawl again. And hey, if not, no worries either. Sometimes you just get sick of playing a game that you played for years and years and years. You can understand that. Not condemning. Yeah, that that is actually the best choice. There's a few, several words you could use, but that's probably the one that you were thinking of actually. Is this a remix? This is actually a kind of a cool remix. I mean, as far as background playlists, it's sort of tongue-in-cheek enough that I think it works. It's like a disco theme, but it's not grating or annoying. I wouldn't listen to this, but I think it works well for background, background music in a stream, actually. Sort of like a mildly amusing remix. Agent Chuck is who we're going to watch now. The Peltest. Level 18 Foen, Spider 4, he's only got one cool play for us. I see a Transporter Vault. Oh, I think I remember this, yes. Now he is in Spider Nest 4. And uh, he's in the vault. Uh, this is the one with Moths of Wrath and Ghost Moth and Emperor Scorpions. Um, it's kind of a wide open. A bunch of Emperor Scorpions. There's a Moth of Wrath, probably right from that vault. He's got it lured out, so that's good. It can't berserk the Emperor Scorpions. He's got a plus five Holy Greatsword. Nice weapon. Although that brand is not terribly useful. But Enchanted Greatsword is pretty good. There's an Emperor Scorpion. Oh, here's a Dispersal Trap. He's confused the Emperor Scorpion. He's gonna snipe. Oh, he's got the heavy crossbow sniper which got revamped and he shot it down I forget what sniper does it got changed not it's not spider it's not a spider guys it's not a snobiter what the fuck it's 
sniper. <laughs> wow. No one saw that. A plus Vorpal that never misses, base delay. Okay. I'm thinking of... Well... There was one of those that got changed. I'm not thinking of Stormbow. Yeah, no. Maybe I'm just thinking of the change to this when it was merged with Bullseye. And Bullseye was removed. But there was another one. It's definitely not Stormbow that I'm thinking of. Because I know that change. Um, I think... Did we already see the cool play? No, there was another crossbow. Yeah, the bu you're right. The bullseye was a shield. Um, but there was another crossbow. That... Not damnation. Okay. Uh, that was the cool play. Was that dispersal assist? Yeah, okay. So it was him. Again, similar to what Yermak was doing. He's blinking it. It's confused and... I mean, it's not so critical because he's confused the thing. He could just walk back and shoot it, to be perfectly honest. But he's doing the assist to blink the Emperor Scorpion around and take shots at it without ever getting adjacent to it. So always a good tactic to remember for Formicids especially, or non-Formicids, because you can do it too and just let yourself blink. And that that will probably get you further on average, of course, because both of you are moving. Uh, the only issue, of course, with that is that you're not going to be near the trap anymore, so there is that aspect. So it, in that sense, it does not work as well, but the average distance between you and the monster you're running from is better if you, if you actually blink yourself. It's just you may not... You won't be able to do it in the same way. Formicids can use a very reliable technique, though, because they won't get blinked by the trap itself because they have stasis. Piercer, yes. Piercer is what I'm thinking of. And... That did get changed, I'm pretty sure. I, like, it, this isn't even up to date. I think it got... It lost the EV bonus, the Malice. It got merged. Ah, okay. It got merged with Stormbow. Okay, that was the part I was forgetting. Yeah, and, P and they have somewhat similar names with the ER at the end, you know, Sniper, Piercer. My bad. Alrighty, that was Agent Chuck. Nice use of Dispersal Trap. There's somebody called Shaded Knight coming up with a cool play. He's in Vault 5. What kind of cool plays could somebody who loves Rue this much possibly make when he's not worshipping Rue? He is a slayer of level 27 Foen of Wujian, in fact. Does, can he even play this game? Can I even remember the frame that I just looked at five seconds ago? 50537. Here we go. Starting on D, you know, the vaults entrance. We're going into vaults. He's going to the downstairs. Here he goes. We've got Yaktars. He's got a Logitongue of Speed. Very nice weapon. Oh, he shafts himself again. Doesn't want to deal with those Yaktars. He's down on Vaults 4. Now what's up? He's got a big, angry room full of elves and seas, giants. He shafts... He goes down the stairs and goes back up. Now he heavenly storms. This is looking like it might... Well, he's at 40... Oh, wow, he is almost dead. Don't die, Gruntlang says to him. Boy, Shaded, this is uh, this is some uh, interesting play. He's doing all these whirlwind attacks, but he's taking a lot of damage. He has no defenses. He's 17 AC, 8 EV, 19 SH. He did pull it out. Pull it off, I should say. And rest it up. I, I'm not sure what the going downstairs... Maybe... Yeah, that's Grunt Lang. That's a Grunt, a former dev who uh, implemented his own language, which is a pretty amusing one. It has lots of exclamation points. And also other cute messages, such as don't die and... Yeah, okay then, exclamation point. 
everything has an exclamation point. Oh, weird is okay. There we go. Cool play. Yep, you did survive that one, Shaded. That's the end of that TTY wreck he just saved right there. Uh, that that dive down to Vault Five, I was I was like, what? When's this happening? Next up is somebody who is made for cool plays. We're actually finally almost to the end of cool plays, even though this has been an uh, hour and a half of these. The deaths might be a little bit quicker. We don't have quite as many deaths as we do have cool plays. This is somebody whose name is Cool Play from CUE server. This first he's got, he, he had a one more that it was kind of long and I didn't include it. This is two of them. Uh, first one in Shoals. But if your name is Cool Play, that's your actual account name. Of course, you got to make cool plays. To not do so would be a disservice to the crawl community. This is a three-hour TTY rig, actually. It's pretty long. 16.521, so this is mostly... This has all been played in one long session, but I think uh, he's got another one, so it's not the entire game. 16.2... No, 5 to one. Check and double check. All right, here we are in Shoals. Yeah, this is sort of a short, kind of a funny one. Uh, he is in statue form. He's got some skeleton bros. So he's going all for statue with his nice AC and still fairly decent EC, uh, EV. And, of course, he's got his shield. He's only using a one-handed weapon, but it is a very nice one-handed weapon, a demon trident of a lack I'm going to guess that he picked that up in Shoals, since it's a Demon Trident, and Shoals tends to have those. Dream Sheep, that's pretty bad. I think you can't be slept, though, as a Formicid. Oh, here it is. His, me his Merfolk Skeleton caught in a net. Oh, but he apports the net away. Now he has a net, and his bro, his Skeleton bro, is no longer netted, because he apported it right off. My net now, as he says. Very short, but pretty cool, cool play. Gotta remember that you can apport netted monsters and get the net, and if it's your ally, that's actually maybe something good to do. You saw it with your own eyes, Flood Killer. You saw it with your own eyes. Again, it was so short, we can replay it so you can see the... This is a little bit of a lead-in, but yeah, this is basically right where it was. Goes up, sees these monsters. Jetty play, stop with the pop up. Okay, there it gets caught. That's why it says caught in the monster list. And that's him aiming the apport. Apport, yoink, you pull the item towards yourself. And there it is. And you see it no longer says caught. So, that was it. Next up, frame 41, 579. Statue form, D14. Oh, I know what this is. This is him going into vaults, and there's going to be some hijinks. He's in vaults. He's buffing up. Why is he buffing up on vaults 1, you might ask? Well, it's because we're in a shaft. And then we're going to shaft again. And that's right. We're going to shaft one more time. We're going to get... Are we going to do anything else? Heavenly Storm right now? Or... I'm going to take a... Eat a ration. Apparently, we forgot to do that. Vampiric halberd. Now we shaft down. Oh wow! Look at this shaft right into the shop, with no monsters around. Gonna go do some shopping, cause uh, you know what? Why not? Now we're gonna open the door, and we see a golden dragon. This some um, nasty monsters. Wow, look at that. Take out the golden dragon. Some Wuxian martial moves. Go shopping again because we gotta shop. All these monsters not awake. Forget how long this goes on. But 
this is him basically handling yep yeah that's why he shafted himself he's only at 29 so he's he's going for that I don't you'd have to check the log you can see that link to get the log of it I can paste it or you can query it I think it'll show it by default 32, 462. He didn't get deed win in less than 40k. Here he is doing an awful lot, fighting an awful lot of monsters. This this is a somewhat nasty vault. It has shops, but each of those rooms is filled with like you know, out of depth tier monsters. He's fighting a bunch of vault guards, storm dragon. Well, this, this stream is Spoilers City, Sally. Of course, I, of course I'm course i spoiling. I'm a dev. I want to spoil people's fun. Two Storm Dragons. That's what those uh, light blue capital Ds are. We've got a Vault Warden. Those are always fun. Vault Sentinel. That's the light blue P. Got a Yaktar Captain who can't do much since he's in melee range. But we're just cutting them all down with Heavenly Storm. Large Shield Bint. Very nice name. Perfect time for a Gentle Flute Solo. 15 slang from Wujian. All these moves. Just gotta keep up that slang. There's a Frost Giant, that light blue capital C. Freezing Wraith, not that big of a deal, although it can't slow you because you're a Formicid, so definitely not a big deal. Now a bunch of Vault Guards, really mopping up the entire quad, and certainly some other monsters are waking up because the storm makes a ton of noise. Yeah, there's a Storm Dragon again, and a Shadow Dragon, that's the Magenta, capital D. But uh, this slaying is cutting down everything. He's just wiggling. He's wiggling back and forth for victory. There's a Fire Giant and a Tengu Ringer, Reaver. Uppercase Q. Light Magenta. Uppercase Red C, who's already long dead now, is the Fire Giant. You'll notice his glyph is an 8, because that's the glyph for statues in uh, console, and he's in statue form. So sometimes when you change forms, um, Depending on what the form is, you'll, your glyph will change to that of the monster. Like if you go into ice form, you'll turn into the capital Y glyph that beast, certain beast monsters use. He's on fire. He don't care. He's got an Eaton. There's a Quicksilver Dragon. And there's a Titan. And an Eaton. Yeah, well, I already said Eaton. Titan is the uppercase Magenta Sea. There's more Fire Giants. He's just pulling them all in because that Heavenly Storm is making all kinds of noise. So he's at least waking up. And he's also fighting very close to the center, too, so he's, um, and that's going to change shouting and stuff because there's all these monsters crossing between those vaults. And uh, he's going to kill a very, pretty good fraction of the entire floor if he just keeps fighting here. Serpent's last, yep, because he didn't want to get dispelled. I don't know if the storm presumably... Can get, but statue form can get dispelled. I mean, his actions are all slow. He's 1.5 movement. Um, the nice thing is that at least his attacks are scaled. So his martial attacks are getting like, you know, he's getting on average, you know, like 1.5 attacks because that's how long his movement is taking due to statue form. So his, he's using a weapon which is not ideal for statue form, but he's not getting double penalized. Um, by having, say, slow movement and having his attacks just be like, you know, uh, taking 15 odd. It's because of the way martial moves work, it scales the number of attacks you get by the audit, the, the time it takes for your movement. That still doesn't make statue form good overall, considering that if you have a melee weapon, you still are only making. Well, so. Normally you would have a 15 odd attack. I guess actually, right, because you're getting 15 odd, which is giving you 
It takes 15 odd to move. You're getting the equivalent attack amount. Now, outside of Wujian, you wouldn't be getting that. You would just be getting your attack would be taking 1.5 times how much it normally takes. You get a damage bonus, but that that just counteracts the slowness. Whereas here with Wujian, it's actually better because you you get it scaled by that movement. So it's actually okay in in statue form using Wujian, but otherwise it's not so hot. You know, you the benefit that you're getting from the 1.5 damage multiplier is mitigated by the fact that your attacks take um, 1.5 as much time. So you get in fewer of them. There's Sojabo. Wow, we're still going. We're just cutting down the entire Vaults 5 crew with one long heavenly storm. Right. Yes, that's right. So normally it's it's really a wash using a weapon. Now for UC it's different because UC also gets yes that's right Flagello your interpretation is correct. Um, you you see unarmed combat gets a damage bonus that statue form gives. It's it's not in addition to the multiplier of 1.5 that you would get regardless of UC or or whatever. Um, so you get extra damage thrown in there so it's actually pretty decent in statue. Now you get defenses, of course, and that's why a lot of people like to use it. So I didn't. We backed off a little bit there. Sojabo's. Oh, we got blown backwards by Sojabo's wind blast. But Sojabo's not got a lot. That magenta now red. So Soji's almost dead. Um, Sojabo is dead. We're still cutting through this stuff. We killed Sojabo. We got blown backwards, but we walked back, and the clouds blocked low, so Sojo couldn't lightning bolt us out of Los. Man, we uh, we killed a lot of stuff. Looks like Cool Play brought the brought the pain to this Vaults 5 level. Um, they actually forgot to annotate it at this time. We'll go ahead and stop it here because I think, you know, you see they basically killed most of the nasty stuff in Vaults 5. And, uh, well, there's still some more things to mop up, but overall... Yeah, you don't get the decay. I mean, the, the well, I mean, it does. That is a factor. If you kill things, or if you... Is it only on kill? It's probably on kill. In any case, Serpent Slash, is, Serpent Slash also gives you a multiplier of damage. So it's not just the decay. The, the bigger factor is Serpent Slash is giving you extra damage for every martial attack. And that would, of course, s still include Storm if you have Storm up. So that I think that's the bigger factor, but... It is true that it's also not going to decay your d storm duration at all. Your your slaying from your storm. I think it has a, a, a overall duration too, where it can just turn off after a while. Well, nice, cool play, cool play. Uh, that's two of them. We've got two more from cool play. That's not at all confusing, right? Cool plays, cool play. I'm talking about Serpent Slash, not Heavenly Storm. Serpent Slash gives you a damage bonus to all martial moves. So if you use Serpent Slash during Heavenly Storm, you're getting that damage on top of the slaying from Heavenly Storm. I'm talking about what's the bigger factor about Serpent Slash. And the, you're getting, it is instant and you're not gonna decay. The, the slaying from Heavenly Storm won't decay at all. So you'll keep it, you'll keep it there, but what I'm saying is that the benefit for Serpent Slash damage-wise is is the bonus that it gives you, the straight-out bonus that it gives you. I forget what it is. That's going to be a bigger factor than any loss of slang. Is is what I'm is what I'm saying. But it is true that you also are not decreasing your slang. When talking about what how good something is, sometimes it's helpful just to characterize what's what's more, what's less. They, you can have two good things and one can be more than the other.
hearing it is slang. Yeah, that's a good point. If it is going to run out, that particular case, you are going to go from 10 slang to 0, and the difference between 10 slang and 0 slang is pretty big, so that's that's fair. 445. I didn't know his sl it was about to run out right at that time. 44521. He is, here he is, he's achieved, his time listed there is just ought, which is, because he's in statue form, it's going to be much higher than his turn count, because every movement takes one point, you know, five normal turns or 15 ought, normal turn is 10 ought, uh, but his turn count is still well below 40,000, as we saw from that query. He is going to, once again, wield a better halberd than the one than the thing that he had now he is going to apparently he's gonna he so he shattered he's been shattering the zot 5 vault he's cleared out the entire vault wait a minute hold up huh Boy, let me go check this out did i miss something i think i missed something Four two three hundred. Yes, this is the first one. Okay, here he is in in Zot. He's already shattered his way into the vault. I mean, this is probably going to be somewhat similar to what we just witnessed in Vault Five. It's just going to be with different monsters. He's got apparently gotten himself contaminated from, I think, a Star Contam weapon that he unwielded. But he did not get mutated. Yep, he is moving his way into vaults, into the top of the wing. Three orb guardians. He's shouting. I, I know. I. S yeah, he did shout for attention. He is doing low turn count strats, so I can't criticize too much. There's the Heavenly Storm. It's time to brew up a storm. Quicksilver Dragon. Fourteen slaying. Oh, we're... Oh, well, that, what is that? Oh, it's Song of Slang. That's why. Yeah, Song of Slang is the one in light blue. Yeah, that, it may be. I was wondering what that was. Ninja Turtles, Substyle, I know you're listening to this. You love it. It's very immersive. He's good. He'll see this video, I hope. And then he'll say, oh, God damn it, Gamma Funk. Ninja Turtles in my RPG stream. He is going after the central vault. He's got traps. There's a mark. There's an alarm trap. He's got eight from Song of Slang. He's got ten from Heavenly Storm. Zero Fs given. Yeah, he was using Shatter with Wizardry, casting it at 33% to get into the vault earlier. He's got an awful lot of stuff here. There's a clown. That's that... P, that P, uh, P is the glyph for humans. The Q are the class draconians. That one's a storm caller, that brown one. Uh, and the non class draconians are a different color, or a different glyph. They're lowercase d. That's the red one. They're just colored by what color they have. The class ones are on Q, so you can differentiate them. There he goes. Heavenly Storm. Took down a lot of stuff. Oh, he stepped on the alarm trap himself. He said, go ahead, do your worst, Sot 5. I came here to kick ass and chew bubblegum, and I'm all out of bubblegum. Look at that. S stabbed him like a ripe chocobo. There's another killer clown. He doesn't care. Better watch it. Don't get, don't get clowned. Don't get clown pied. There's a Moth of Wrath. Oh, 
unexcluding that other side. Storm is down to one. Uh, there goes Storm. Yeah, I mean, you can you can do that. Um, I mean, and I don't know that he did the alarm trap. As he annotates, he just did it to fight more stuff. I mean, you can just reuse Heavenly Storm if you need it. I mean, he's got five stars of, or six stars of piety. He's not, you know, the, if you were it just, he's doing turn count stuff. So those rules don't apply, but. Um, if you're if you're worried about dying, getting marked is is significantly dangerous and probably a lot less dangerous than, than just letting your heavenly storm roll out. But yeah, it's it's with turn count stuff. People do. I think he's basically just trying to minimize turns is what he's doing. Alarm Slef. Alarm Slef for more. You don't want to alarm Slef. If Slef gets woken up, it makes everybody's day bad. Slef is always complaining. Don't want to bring Slough into the picture. All right, awesome, cool plays, cool play. You're, this was obviously a really cool game. Uh, congrats on the win and the low current turn count win. You um, definitely showed us. Oh, oh, we're not done. This right. This was only the second premature uh, congratulatory speech. We have one more cool play from Cool Play. This is him on the orb run where he demonstrates some translocation technique. It's the one that I loaded earlier accidentally. We only have one cool play after this. He's unlearning Shatter. Why is he unlearning Shatter, you might ask? What could he possibly... And Shadow Creatures. What's he going to replace those spells with? Shadow Creatures, of course, not being that great when you're ascending. Pass Wall, I see... Summon butterflies, of course. It's a standard spell, but oh, dispersal? What's this? That's right. He's got eight translocations, and he's got a staff of wizardry. And I actually missed that last one. Lesser beckoning, was it? Yes, lesser beckoning. He wants to pull monsters close to him so that he doesn't have to, you know, give them turns doing nasty stuff. He's standing on the orb. His statue self very slowly going to pick it up after he turns on flight and eats a lot of food statues can eat bread don't question it oh he's not a statue right now to be fair but he, he probably will be i don't know if he's actually going to go in statue he might stay out of it there's a tormentor right away not not even three tiles just two tiles what's he going to do Statue to get the resist. Then, um, Beckon, not too successfully, but now an eye of training. Boy, he's really getting the spawns. Oh, he's got uh, zombie hands. I, I don't think we've seen him cast that before. Makes sense since he, was, he had. 14 earth so that he could cast shatter with like a 33% with wizardry fail rate. Of course he's going to have BVC as well if he can cast it. 32 int. This is one smart bug. Hell Sentinel. Uh-oh. What's the play? Net him? That, um, Minmei would question that move. Oof. Hell fired. But he does kill the Hell Sentinel. So we're going to see some hopefully cool uses of this. Because otherwise this is... I mean, you do run into high level demons. Oh, it's its middle. He pinned it. The nice pin. Pin was very helpful there. Uh, mostly is that it's not actually an effective way overall. Use of turns or use of actions to get um, a better outcome compared to non-netting depending on what you're going for if you're doing it to reduce their cast frequency given that you have to spend a turn netting them and giving the dynamics of it breaking out and giving what it actually does when it struggles to uh, struggles to escape a lot of people think that message means that a lot of you know it's wasting a lot of time but it doesn't quite work that way now if you actually want the monster to not move for some reason 
then a net is a good thing, like the Royal Jelly, it's pretty good. And if you want to know more details, check out the dynamics of what a monster does in the source sometime. The net entry in LearnDB probably doesn't give you a very good write-up, but it might. So I haven't really seen it. We're on D2. <laughs> did actually did he, we're already on D2? Is, is this gonna happen now? What's he gonna do? There's the net. Now the Hell Sentinel can't quite fireball him yet. Yeah, well they got they got netted okay. He's just I mean this isn't actually helping him the net. I mean, he's in range of it. You know, it, it, um. Oh, look at that dispersal. He dispersed it. And that will blink. So it's an MR checking spell that, um, if it can't, t it will try to teleport based on an MR check. Um, yep, here comes the annotation. So he used dispersal on the Hell Sentinel to blink it away so that it wouldn't. Hellfire. Now, of course, that is a die roll because as we can go back and check that out. Now he's digging out. Oh, he's not done yet. He hasn't actually ascended, but that's okay. That's not what we wanted to see. Um, okay, so let's watch this again. He does net it, but it's not even in range at this point. So he's going to walk into range of the thing anyway. So that's not really helping him. It did work though, he did catch it, now he's in range, and it's still adjacent to the stairs, so um, he is slightly reducing the chance for it to Hellfire, but he did have to waste a 1.5 turn, but anyway, he successfully blinked it, and um, it did blink at a nice location. I think it could blink closer, I don't actually know what the average look I think it's a typical blink um, oh but the issue of course it it's it was adjacent to the stair so yeah overall that was a really good play because you don't want it following you it you might blink in it it might hellfire you whatever but um, hopefully it doesn't spam hellfire for like four times due to your 1.5 movement and randomized you know energy and kill you but at 288 at 234 or whatever he was at you're pretty safe but yeah, it was adjacent to the stairs, so the dispersal was indeed a very good play. If there was a gap, I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't waste a turn because you might just blink it back into range. Uh, no, they cannot. They should not be able to because they can't attempt a movement action, and they have to attempt a movement action in order to follow you. I think that should be the an correct answer. Nice, cool play, cool play. Good use of dispersal to escape, and very nice run. Congrats! That's obviously an outstanding run in terms of getting points. Last cool play is from Pleonasm. This is a unlikely. This is the last cool play that. Um, high level R melee spell. Are you talking about disjunction, BH? And that does, disjunction does still exist. VH, Mr. Video there is uh, the dev VH. And uh, he implemented, did you implement both dispersal and disjunction or just disjunction? Yep, disjunction does still exist. Not a widely used or I would say even widely loved spell because it's, it's so hard to get it castable. And of course, control blink exists. And um, well, malign gateway. So a lot of, people don't really use it too much they might use dispersal because it's easier to cast but I have seen it get get use just disjunction okay one one two three two six three certainly is very effective for just walking in and out of places it's just you have to be a character that has enough translocations to do that Pleonasm the unseen in swamp uh, oh yeah, this is a funny one. So here we go. Found a Rune War Axe. Found a Hydra. 
confuse the Hydra, it failed. Now we're gonna melee it with our dagger and or confuse it and we do successfully confuse it eventually. Okay, Hydra problem solved. What's gonna happen next? Why this war axe, it's ruined, it's so shiny. Why do we need a war axe if we got a plus six elect dagger? Apparently we have another exec axe. Um, well, I can, that's, um, that's what I'm kind of, I'm going to replay a bunch of them now, but I wouldn't necessarily put them in the all time book. Uh, I'll have to, I'll have to look, think about that and give you some BH, few of them that I might recommend. So he picked up that war axe and he wielded it. And what was it? It was distort. Yes. And he unwielded it. Oh no. Cast into the abyss. Of course, the 25% chance. Someone's starting to death and grip standing on a choco. Yep. There's a lot of funny ones like that. Yeah, I'll have to go through and see if I can find them. Some of the ones that I would give you no longer can be pulled up because they were on uh, CSCO and the server for that got deleted. Uh, the data from that, ser that server got deleted, unfortunately. And now we're stuck in the abyss all because we just had to see what that war axe was. We had to know. We had to know. We had literally no choice. It was ruined. A, it was a war axe. Okay, you don't just leave a war axe lying on the ground. B, it was ruined. You got to look at the ruined. It's ruined. I mean, it's, it's shiny. It's ruined. You have to check. And yes, it was distortion. And yes, we got banished. But honestly, it was worth it. Now we know that it was distortion. And that is information that we have, and we'll always have that. And just think if we didn't know that it was a distortion or axe, we would never know, and we wouldn't, we'd, we'd always be wondering. And sure, you might say we could just check the listing file after the game is over, but that's too long to wait. We need to know now. Of course, I'm uh, being completely sarcastic. You don't want to go randomly wielding ruined weapons just because you're curious. Especially a war axe, which would be a terrible weapon. There's absolutely no reason why you would ever want a mundane war axe on this character over other kinds of axes, like a broad axe, if you really were seriously considering switching. Now we're stuck in the abyss purely out of our own curiosity. It's amazing that we're not a Felid because we were curious enough to get ourselves killed and we're looking for a way out. Fighting monsters, trying not to lose too much HP. We're a Formicid so we can't teleport. So that makes XL17 Abyss a bit scarier than it would normally be because we don't have the teleport option. Of course we can always dig and we do have stealth. That is very helpful that we apparently have good stealth so we can avoid fighting a lot of things and um, we can't haste ourselves though we're gonna have to keep moving keep digging and use our stealth to make monsters lose track of us nope you cannot confuse a tentacled star spawn too much MR Alas, nice trees. Trees might indicate the presence of a vault. And we are on Abyss 3, so the rune vault can generate. Okay, we're going to summon a single ice beast to, to assist us on this fight. And now we're switching to the exec axe. We apparently really do love axes. I wonder if he has, like, a bunch of axe skill or whatever. Where the classic... Formicid Stealth Dagger Slash Axe Build. That should hit Abyss Monster. Choose the walls. Uh, Spatial Maelstrom BH. I feel like you implemented that monster, did you not? It's a it's a Star Glyph monster. 
No, world, yeah, okay, there you go. No, world binder is the one that summons stuff from all sorts of different, it's a very low level, like, HP, but it summons things from all sorts of different branches. Same thing that the one corruptor demon spawn monster does, but it just has a lot less HP. And yeah, spatial vortices are the things that are the distortion vorte vortex monster, like, you know, fire vortices and whatnot. They just hit you with a distortion hit that can blink, teleport you, or well, banish you further into the abyss as well. You don't usually see them outside of the abyss, so. And uh, spatial maelstroms uh, spit those out when they bump into walls, and they can destroy any kind of wall that is not a permarock wall just by bumping into it. Okay, we've... We're fighting a bunch of Raiju. We're seeing more trees. We're on Abyss 3, so this could be the Rune Vault. We're using that EH. Putting those rare puppers to sleep. We apparently quaffed an Agility Potion at some point. He's, Iggy's already on. He's already got the rune on Abyss 5. While you were napping, he yoinked the room. Naga Warrior. That's probably a shapeshifter. So... Pull to a different... Re uh oh Dire Elephant. Oh no, this is a vault. Those red curly braces are sense monsters. This is a nasty vault. He got pulled right into this lava island with an elephant, and what do you what do you think is going to be there? What do you think those curly brace, braces are going to be? Yep, you guessed it. More elephants, and there he is, the boss man himself, the elephant. One hell of an elephant. No bh, not giants. Or did he look that up? He looked up the elephant. Never mind, he didn't see it. There's a statue. He's got he's got them all. Uh, they're not awake. There's the elephant. Look at this stealthy play. He's in viz. Now the elephant. I thought a elephant can see in viz. Holy shit. There's a draconian shifter, which is apparently like a random monster spawn that just is there. Nice use of invis. These dire elephants can't see invis. Apparently, elephants can't see invis. Gateway out, because he killed so much stuff. And what's he gonna do? Is he just gonna pick up this rune? Oh wait, there should be. Oh, there's another elephant. It's a big old box of hate. And yeah, holy crap, elephants do not see invis. Good to know. A path out. Hark, warrior. Apparently. Yeah, no, he does. He's going for the rune, Iggy. Look at this. I forgot that this vault has the... Has actually... A, I thought it was just a tiny closet. With like the elephant in the tiny closet on top, you know, standing over the room. Spatial Maelstrom. There's BH's monster. Well, I actually didn't see it, but I'll take his word for it. I see Spatial Vortices. We Now we're fighting... A, Wow, we only got 48 HP left. We're getting a lot of damage from this... This vortex. We really, uh, we need to watch it here. This, it could all end here. Yeah, six, the plus six dagger and 11 AC. Woo, he says. Smiley face. Oh, here comes more. What do you have to say? For, how do you explain yourself, Pleonasm? What do you have to say for yourself, Pleonasm, for this reckless play? Are you? Do you have contrition? No, no, not even an ounce of contrition. He says, "Wield idea distortion axe was the best idea ever." Oh, Pleonasm, you did not learn a valuable lesson this day, but congratulations. 
You did get a cool play. You did get an Abyssal Rune. Possibly your first rune. I don't know if this is your... I mean, you're in Swamp 3. Presumably you went to Swamp first. So nice first rune. Yes, Iggy. He saw a mundane war axe, Iggy, with his plus six dagger, and he's also carrying a, an, a, an exec axe. Apparently he's an axe's dagger build. He saw one, and he had to wield it. Not use an ID scroll. He had to wield it. And it was a distortion war axe, and then he unwielded it, and he was cast into the abyss. And then he fought an elephant, and he went invisible, and he spooked the elephants real good, and he got a rune. And obviously, this BH and I have failed as developers to develop this game properly, because he was completely rewarded for all of his decisions.